Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. The recovery for me it has to do with my willpower to tell myself that this disease will not beat me. A cancer survivor's cure is to lead a happy life. A driver's education teacher does her best to prevent accidents and save lives. A retired HPD officer shares his knowledge of traditional Hawaiian weapons made from indigenous materials. From the Hikino Archives, a look at traditional Hawaiian hale building. And a deaf cheerleader feels she has the right and ability to do anything hearing students can do. All on this episode of Hikino, coming to you from Kamehameha Schools, Hawaii Middle School, home of the Warriors. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no. Can do. We're here at the Kamehameha Middle School's Hawaii campus located in the district of Puna on the Big Island in Keaau. Monday mornings can be quite hectic for any middle school student. Here at Kamehameha Middle School, we have a morning gathering known as Morning People which takes place the first day of the week. Pico centers are learning for the week. During Pico, the students oli or chant to their teachers, asking them to share their knowledge with them. The teachers or kumu then reply with their own oli, inviting the students to learn. Morning Pico gives us the opportunity to collect ourselves and prepare for the upcoming week. Our first story is by the students at Maui High School in Kahului. They introduce us to a young woman who is determined not to be denied the life experiences she desires. Maui High School Junior Varsity Cheerleader, Chantel Sandoval, spends her weekend spreading cheer. But what makes this extraordinary is the fact that Chantel is legally deaf. Here is Chantel speaking through an interpreter. I was just born that way. When she, my mother gave birth to me, um, she almost died. And then, I don't know, I um, became deaf. Her deafness, however, has not denied her from pursuing her dream of cheering in front of a crowd. Cheering was something I always wondered about, and I just wanted to know if I could make the team. However, Chantel's journey to becoming a cheerleader for her school was not an easy one, even with the help of sign language interpreters who helped facilitate communication between Chantel and her coach because anybody else I can yell, point your toes, lift your shoulders, keep your head up, anything like that. But if I try to yell at her to do those things, she doesn't understand, So, or she doesn't hear me. So that's the biggest thing, is just trying to get her to really understand what I'm saying. As of recently, hearing her teammates and coaches just became easier, thanks to the help of a cochlear implant, a surgically implanted medical device that provides a sense of sound to a person who is deaf or severely hard of hearing. Before I got my cochlear, I could still speak for myself and I could, um, I used hearing aids, but still, it was still hard for me and I would miss a lot of the information. And many people would talk and probably say, speak behind me and, and I could understand that. Since I've got cochlear, I can understand them a little bit more and I'm, my hearing is improving. While cochlear has made cheering an easier task for Chantel, the negative stigma surrounding deaf people still remains. Many people feel very awkward and they avoid deaf people and they don't offer help like in a store. They tend to just ignore you. I feel like really, I feel really hurt. I feel like insulted. And just because I'm deaf, it doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. Though Chantel has to navigate around these obstacles, she embraces the fact that she is deaf. No, deaf people can do anything. It doesn't matter if they can't hear. Just like hearing people, like, ugh, what if they couldn't walk? Or if they couldn't, you know, does that mean they can't do anything? No, they can do anything with a wheelchair. It's the same thing for deaf people. We can't hear, but we can do anything we want. 
But Chantel wants to make one thing clear. Do not call her impaired. Well, I don't like the word impaired. It means something's broken. And I'm not broken, I'm only deaf, and I was born that way. Don't call me hearing impaired, call me deaf. Chantel Sandoval is living proof that a communication challenge does not have to keep anyone off the sidelines. She plans to continue to spread the Sabre spirit as loud as she can. This is Sydney Green from Maui High School for Hiki No. Hiki No is now on Instagram. For show updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do. We're back at the Kamehameha School's Hawaii campus in Kea'o in the District of Puna. The school opened in 1996 for the purpose of expanding educational opportunities for Hawaiian children on this island. Our original campus was located in Keokaha with only 80 students in grades K-3. to In 2001, we relocated to our current site in Keo and opened our middle school in the first two buildings. The construction of the high school and the elementary school continued until their completion in 2004. We take you now to the west side of our island, where students from Konawana High School profile a woman who dedicates her life to keeping teens safe behind the wheel. And I kind of like going out until we're straight, so go some more. Make sure you keep looking left, right, left. So I would like to see less teen deaths. Okay. And I figure the only way that I could really make that happen personally is if I became a driver's ed teacher and taught them the, the safe habits that I have myself that have kept me alive all these years. I also would like to hope that after students take driver's education and they learn the proper way to drive, the proper way to take attention, to avoid uh, risk and danger. Mrs. Verbo's lessons go beyond the classroom. She gives students lifelong advice to handle any driving situation, especially for students from the outer islands of Hawaii who are not experienced with driving at faster speeds. One of the things I like that Ms. Verbal teaches us is she teaches us about how to handle those freeways, even though we have no experience driving them here. Students on the Big Island drive on mainly country roads. Driving in a big, busy, really loud city is foreign to us. The second one that you could do is the oil. Basic car maintenance is also taught in Mrs. Verbal's driver's education program. Mrs. Verbal is in her ninth year of teaching driver's education at Konawana High School. Her years of teaching have afforded her many unforgettable memories with her novice student drivers. But the, the thing that probably stands out most in my mind, there was a boy who was driving along and a wasp got into the car. And he was freaking out and he was slapping himself all over. And I kept saying, put your hands on the wheel, because <laughs> he was like this. And I had to go over and grab the wheel, calm him down, get him to bring the car to the side of the road since I don't have gas and I don't have a steering wheel, and to get him safely to the side of the road, and then convince him the wasp wasn't there any longer so that we could actually continue our driving. Witnessing the dangerous practice of texting while driving, Mrs. Verbal shares with her students her opinions about policy changes she feels are necessary to decrease cases of texting while driving. I mean, I think my my personal view is, I think the police should give out more tickets. I think that punitively it should happen because we've tried many things such as having campaigns and asking people not to use their cell phones and yet I drive along in my car or in the driver's of the car and I'm constantly seeing this, blah, 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 or I see this. And it really comes down to no one's proficient enough driver to take their eyes off the wheel for even one second. Often just thought of as another teacher for Hawaii's teenagers, a driver's education teacher doesn't just teach, but saves lives. I believe driver's ed is so important because even if we lose one student to a traffic fatality, that's too much. And I believe any money, any time that people are putting into this to save even one life is worth it. This is Ronald Crivello, Kahihi Kolo from Konawana High School for Hiki No. And we're back at the Hawaii campus of Kamehameha Schools here in Keaau. I'm standing near the spot where the groundbreaking ceremony took place back in the year 2000. We've come a long way since then. Our campus sits on 312 acres of former William Herbert Shipman land. 
We have 256 students attending our elementary school, 324 in the middle school, and 572 in high school, for a total of 1,152 students. Each one of them, as a student of Kamehameha, is honored to be part of Pawahi's legacy. Our next story is by the students at St. Francis School in the Manoa District of Oahu, who introduce us to an expert in the lost art of crafting traditional Hawaiian weapons. We should use the weapons as a tool for education, to educate their generation and the next generation about the endangerment of native Hawaiian species. For Manny Matos, a retired Honolulu police officer and plumbing inspector, who is also a Hawaiian weapons enthusiast, art is another way to preserve the culture. Well, when I was a policeman about maybe 30 years ago, a fellow policeman who was a great artist, he introduced me into making Hawaiian war weapons. One day I went over to his house and we made a weapon. I liked it and uh, from then on I did a lot of research, learned more about the the weapons and what they were used for in, in our Native Hawaiian society. Manny Matos continues to handcraft and gather weapons that represents the soul of old Hawaiian combat. The weapons were, they're, they're, a, they're replicas of pieces that exist in museum. They're not all accurate in their size and dimension. Each of them has a different story because they're made out of a different type of wood. But what really astonished me is the Native Hawaiians were a Stone Age culture. They, they didn't have any metals, the copper, iron, anything like that. After a period of time, Manny Matos decided to share his work with the public. He was astounded by the reception he received. It has been a part-time job for me for maybe 15 years, and I would sell them at, at craft shows, Hilo Farmer's Market, hotels have invited me, my, me and my wife. So I've been selling those part, you know, part-time. As Manny Matos made his prized creations, he found out about the endangerment of the woods from the dryland forests. So, he devised a plan to save the Hawaiian drylands from extinction. About maybe 10, 12 years ago, I got the idea using the weapons as a tool to teach about the dryland forest, Native Hawaiian dryland forest, which is highly endangered. I created a nonprofit foundation. It's called Preservation of the Dryland Forest. I use a nonprofit donations as a means to finance some of the things that I have to do, going to different schools, going to other islands, in that aspect. I found through all these years of talking to, to young kids, high school kids, even adults, their lack of knowledge of the basic items that were used by their ancestors because they're being so neglected, put it that way. Manny Matos strives to revitalize and preserve the spirit of the Native Hawaiians in each of his creations. It is also his hope that everyone he teaches will come to a fuller understanding of Hawaiian history. This is Michael Delicata from St. Francis School, okay, one, Rahikino. Two, three. Stay tuned after the show to find out what students who created this story learned from their experience. Now, in keeping with the theme of traditional Hawaiian practices, we open the Hikino vaults to bring you a past story from Keikula Ni'ihau or Keikaha Public Charter School about Hale building. Hiti Mila na homano o ke kula ni kikai tamalo o National Tropical Botanical Gardens Malawai kawa i no takotu ana i tatutu la hale That's the outer bark. That's all we want to take off is the outer bark. Gotta pull slow and set it. Stop. Eia ke tahi manao maia mai te moro e pili ana i tatutu la hale ana. When we uh, were talking about developing the Hale project and using a lot of volunteers, the Laulima concept of many hands to help build, um, first thought for me was to try to uh, reach out to our community and in particular uh, students of the Hawaiian language. So the charter schools were the logical place to go. And um, any, in any language, unless you utilize the language uh, in a particular field a lot, uh, you tend to lose the vocabulary. And since uh, no traditional style Hale have been built, in a, in a very long time, I thought it'd be a really good way to sort of resurrect the vocabulary. Yeah, he did a lot of good. He did a lot of good. 
Mai nu te mă la la. Liliana m-a tăuit ea ta la. Te mi-a mătă, mai o ai tăuit ta la. Mă vai nu ta, mă numai nu-i mă. Apo, ana mă leu ai tăuit ea mea. Po, vili, vili, mai o ai tăuit. Pic ea ai tăuit ta. Eia o Francis and Nancy. Că tăuit tutulu. E ho i te ana i a mato e pili ana i ka tutulu hale Hawaii ana. So now, if you want to be a hale, you got to have a reason and a purpose. Then you got to go out and you got to look for your uh, resources. Then you kukulu your pai pai. You got to uh, then you got to kanu your posts. It's better to you have to have your, uh, all your posts already cut, all the notches. Put them all together inside, and you gotta put the olokea inside, and then you gotta work from the olokea, and then you put your attaching on. Etana like ana o kaino ke tahi o ta Francis Hamana e pili ana itona mana o nota ne e moa ana aku mahope o ta ho o maha ana o Francis. He expects us to retain his knowledge, take forth his knowledge. And it's in my complete intention to do that. I love Hale building. It's been a passion of mine since I was a child. And no matter what, I always come back to it. It's a root for me. It's a it's a place of center. And I could never I could never stop this. No matter what, uh, it's part of my culture. It's my history. And the more I perpetuate it, the more I know my children will perpetuate it, and it will never die. As long as we keep it going. My kekula ni o kikaha mai o vau no a nela sate no taku kala nu ho hiki no ma pibia sawai. We're back on the Big Islands at the Kamehameha Schools Hawaii campus in beautiful Keaau. The term oi kela kela, to strive to do what is better than expected, is used frequently on our middle school campus. Every day one out of our eight day cycle is oi kela kela day. Students have the opportunity to wear our special oi kela kela shirt in place of our school uniform. Being able to wear the shirt is a privilege for us. It is a reminder to always do our best, no matter where we are or who is watching. Oi Kela Kela has become an essential part of our middle school. Our final story comes to us from students at Kapa'a Middle School on Kauai. They tell the story of a man whose last name fits perfectly with his approach to fighting cancer. Meet Joe Young. Joseph Young is a loving grandfather with a passion for bowling. He is also a retired police officer whose biggest battle came after he left the force. I was diagnosed three years ago with uh, prostate cancer and uh, I was given options to have radiation treatment, do surgery, or um, don't do anything. I chose not to do anything. His diagnosis and decision to forego chemotherapy came as a great shock to his family. Anybody who hears about someone they really love having cancer, I can say would probably feel sad. It was really sad to see how he felt when they gave him the news that he had cancer as well. It was like, you know, how we're going to say it to the kids, to the children, that their dad and grandpa has cancer. His doctors prescribed medications to prevent the cancer from spreading and reduce inflammation, but Mr. Young had his own treatment plan, spending more time with his family and doing what he loved. He would go on his bowling trips with the family and, you know, basically just spending time together, eating dinners together, spending more quality time together. He has sore legs a lot, so um, when I have time, I help massage his feet, and then my mom and I got him massaging machines to help massage his legs and his back area, and we try to help him as much as we can at home. Three years later, he was declared cancer-free. While he still takes medicine to keep the cancer from recurring, this unexpected turn of events let everyone breathe a sigh of relief. The recovery for me it has to do with my willpower to, to tell myself or that this disease will not beat me. I will I refuse to um, say that, you know, this disease is going to take my life. I, I won't accept it, so I fought back. With 70 years of experience, Mr. Young is determined not to let his medical problems slow him down. 
He continues to lead an active lifestyle with a positive outlook. He has a very strong-minded, very strong inner spirit. He encourages others to be strong and for us to just, you know, count our blessings every day and, you know, just be thankful that we, he's still here. Mr. Young always puts family first. This is an important life lesson he feels everyone should know. They're always there and, and they're giving me support and that's a big plus. Enjoy your life, make every moment count, um, whether it's, you know, having fun out there on the beach, you know, the bowling or doing things you want to do and look for tomorrow. That's it and it's going to, you, you'll be a survivor, you just keep going. Because of his loving family and love for life, Mr. Young is forever grateful to be a survivor. This is Raghav Kumar from Kapa'a Middle School for Hiki No. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hiki No. Remember, all of these stories are written, edited, and shot by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them just as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what some students learned from working on this show. More proof that Hawaii's young people, Hiki Null, can do. Stay tuned after the credits to find out what students learned from their Hiki no experiences. I think what my students learned most on this Hiki no story was being patient and to stay focused on the story itself. On the St. Francis School story for uh, Manny Matos, I was the interviewer and the uh, co-editor. I was a co-editor and scriptwriter. I was the reporter. When we first sent our first rough draft to Ryan, our mentor, uh, we had we I had to learn right off the bat to be patient because I didn't know, you know, what was coming back, what he was going to tell us, what we had to fix. Ryan Kawamoto is a really great mentor. Um, he really motivated us to get everything correct. You learn to take criticism when you're on the show. I think what my students learned most on the Seeking No story was being patient and to stay focused on the story itself. We went through 11 revisions. To do a revised draft, it takes about one week. My main challenge, I believe, was that I speak really quickly. And unfortunately, when I'm trying to do the voiceovers, I'll either get tongue-tied or it doesn't sound great. So I ended up saying the same paragraph 30 or 40 times before we end up finishing it. There was a time when I personally myself said, maybe I shouldn't do this because I'm having so much trouble with it. Finally, when we thought the 11th revision, um, I, even I started to doubt myself because when you have that many revisions, you start to doubt yourself sometimes. But when Ryan finally came back on the 11th cut and said, you know, that's it, 
well, we improved the story. I think we all felt a huge sense of relief because, you know, it, it was over, it was done, but we put together a perfect piece for, the, for Hikino. I'm very glad that I managed to stick with it and be the reporter because this is an opportunity to really play a big part in something that's going to be aired on TV. And it, I, I believe it was worth it to have stuck with it. I really think, you know, going to college now, I can show this to well, whoever my professor is in the class and say, you know, I worked on this together as a team for uh, PBS and we aired it statewide. And I think that's a really a major, major milestone. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo. And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.